Y'all think that I'm another Black China. Y'all think I'm another Kim Kardashian. Y'all think I'm another this and that. Y'all understand. As an entertainer, I didn't sleep with none of these niggas. I didn't have to go home with nobody. Niggas envy, uh. Blinky got the stiffy, uh. Got the blinky, uh. Drum it up, uh. Can you put some on something over here? Hey, what's good? This is the real Lil Benzi channel. Y'all formerly know me as Lil Benzi, aka Mercedes. Now, this is my first video. You know, I've been talking about I was gonna make a video forever and ever and ever and ever, and finally I'm doing it. Finally I'm making it. And this first video is basically gonna go over what everybody keeps asking me. Keep asking me on my lives, keep asking me here, asking me there, and we're just gonna cover that. So when you're on my Instagram, when I'm doing lives, or when you're on my YouTube, you already know. So, first thing first, why is my name Lil Benzi? Because my government name is Mercedes. Also the same reason why I have this tattoo. Got this tattoo at 19, before I was ever formally known as Lil Benzi. So, all y'all was like, oh, her tattoo, and then, no nigga, I didn't think I was gonna make it to where I am today. But shit happens, life changes, and here we are. You know, so that is why I address myself as Lil Benzi, because my name is Mercedes. I'm named after a car. Well, you got a car that you don't own? Look here, little bitch. I, myself, have a plan. I don't have time for materials. You know, when I'm on the road, I need a reliable car. I don't need no luxury car right now. I'm in grind mode, so that luxury car can wait. You know, so I'm cool with not having a Mercedes right now because I'm grinding right now. I got other shit I need to take care of. And I want to be in a good space when I decide to start investing and putting money into luxury things. House, car, land, stocks, so on and so forth. However you want to say it. So on, so forth. However you know. Okay, secondly, how old am I? 23. Just turned 23 in January. Um, my birthday is January 11th, Capricorn shit, Cap shit, however you want to call it. Um, 96, baby. Don't put me in the same category as these other 96 and 97, 98 motherfucking kids because I am not them. I'm not that. I'm, I'm a 90s baby raised by some 80 babies. So, you know, hung with some 70 babies. I'm, I'm a whole different breed. I'm, I'm not like everybody else, you know, and um, I just wanted to put that out there. Another one, um, I, I be asked a lot, why did I become an entertainer? Um, I became an entertainer because of the position I had in life, and I felt like that was my plan Z. I have had several different plans in life, and I never thought that I would need plan Z. Plan Z was dancing. That was like, if life get hard and I can't get out this hole, that was plan Z. And trust me, I done been in the hole a lot of times. You know, like I said, um, I was in college at a point in my life. Um, I do have certifications. Um, I do have training. Um, I worked in the medical field and the construction field. I was blessed enough to get some type of education. But right now, I'm kind of enjoying my life right now. Um, I used to be a CNA. I was seeing, I got my CNA um, when I was 18. Been a CNA for years after that. Um, then I went back to school and got my phlebotomy. Um, never went to work for phlebotomy, just I had it because it was a good thing for nursing because that's what I was pursuing at the time. And then I end up, um, you know, down the line, I end up going back to school, you know, for construction. And that was just shit. It was something that I seen. It was just like I wanted to break from the medical field because the medical field is a... Um, when you're in the medical field and you have a heart and you care about your residents, patients, or whoever you're taking care of, it becomes a strain on you. You know, I was working in a nursing home. I was some people family. They family didn't come see them. They family didn't send them gifts. They family didn't come feed them at supper, breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever. I was there for them. You know, I was their family. I, that's all, I'm all they had. You know, and that was, um, I call it my past life because that was just another chapter in my life that I'm not doing anymore. Um, it's just because I just, I moved on to other stuff. 
but that was a part of my life that I was really into for a long time and it's just that field became really stressful cause, because when you're in a field like that and you don't have good co-workers or a good work system with you, it's really hard. And, you know, I used to work a lot. People know me as a workaholic. Um, a lot of people can tell you I used to work, I used to pull them doubles. I used to clock them hours in. If you meet anybody from my hometown or whoever worked with me, I, they can vouch. I put in time, you know, and I cared about these residents and patients that I took care of because, you know, that's just the type of person I am. A lot of y'all think I'm just some... Um, hood, rat eyes, you know, female that, you know, just talk shit and be in her feelings and complain. No, it's just, I do that when I am provoked. And what y'all don't understand is the internet is not going to stop me from baking you. Let me say it for the, you know, motherfuckers in the back. The internet is not going to stop me from baking you because a lot of y'all have grown to feel like the internet is going to protect you you know, because you decide to say something bad about me. And I'll be like, bro, the internet got not going to stop me from saying what I want to say. You know, because we all know, we all know if we were face to face, you would not keep that same energy. You know, and a lot of y'all don't like me because a lot of people do like me. And I'm fine with that. I don't want everybody to like me. I don't care if everybody like me. It's not meant for everybody to like me. You know? Like, everybody that know me, real recognize real. And a lot of y'all don't recognize real. A lot of y'all just, you know, y'all intrigued with bullshit. And I'm not bullshit, so. But, um, yeah, and then something else, you know, I am, as y'all know, I am an entertainer. You know, at this point in my life, I am an entertainer. I have been an entertainer for a year. And when did I start? I say a year and eight months now, some change. I ain't hit a full two years yet. But yeah, I am an entertainer. Um, I've been doing it for a year and eight months, some change. I don't know the exact dates, so you know, I gotta think, I ain't got time for that. But um, what made me become an entertainer was, it was a point in my life where I was with somebody and you know, I was going to school I was about to get my dream job. I was about to start another semester of my nursing. You know, everything was going so well. And then, boom, I lost everything. You know, I end up losing, you know, my boyfriend. He had passed away. Um, you know, I end up working for a few months. You know, had my dream job. Thought it was the dream job. You know, thought it was a job that I wanted. You know, and after a few months... You know, the, the mental stress of that, um, of school and the passing had weighed so much on me that I was fired from my job. I couldn't stay awake. I couldn't properly do my job. And at that point, I had to be let go. You know, I, I felt like it was unfair, but I wasn't getting any better. Then, you know, I had started dating somebody. And long story short, you know... The situation is fucked up a lot of things financially with me. And it was just like I kept, I, I was in a hole and I couldn't get out. Then after losing my job, my car break down. Transmission. If you know cars, you know transmissions. They are not cheap. It cost, that transmission costed me more than $2,000, you know, to fix on my car. Keep in mind, I had car note. At the time, the car that I had, I had payments on that car, you know, so... It was already hard coming up with a few hundred dollars to pay a car note, let alone a couple thousand dollars to fix a transmission, you know. And I didn't have, like, um, the way I bought the car, it wasn't no real warranty on it. You know, the car place jipped me over. I bought the car when I was 20, so I didn't know about warranties and all that. It's just it was something new because I always had a hand-me-down car or I bought cars off my family. And, um... You know, so much stuff was going wrong. I couldn't keep up with rent. I couldn't get, keep food in my house. I couldn't even feed my fucking dog. I was going to the food pantry to eat. Like, I have family, but it's like, when you get to a certain age in your life, you can't keep picking up the phone and asking people for help knowing that they got a life of their own. You know, some people are blessed to have extra money to help other family members and some are not. You know, my family had already helped me as much as they could, and I couldn't stand asking them for anything else, knowing what they had going on. 
You know, I've called everybody. I've took out loans. I had nowhere else to turn. And me personally, I felt like becoming an entertainer was my way out. You know, but when I first became an entertainer, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. I'm antisocial. I don't like people. And I don't like drunk people. I mean, it's like, it ain't nothing personal. It's just me with my personal experiences in life. I just, they aggravate me. They, sometimes I can deal with it. Sometimes I just, I don't deal with it. It just depends on my attitude, my mood. But, you know, the first time I danced was in Chicago. My first club was Vila, Chicago. I danced for three weekends straight and I paid $150 to dance each night that weekend, did not make nothing. For three weekends, I did not make nothing. And it was just like, it was heartbreaking because I've never been to a strip club. I've never threw money at an entertainer. I've never been in the same presence of a stripper before dancing. So it was just like, okay, let's jump in here, you don't see. You know, I didn't know. I didn't know anything. I was never, you know, it was like, oh, you just, you know, I was told this and that, and then boom, threw out there. But after the fourth, about the fourth week, I was just like, I, I know in my heart I'm a hustler. I've, I've hustled my way out of a lot of shit. I've worked hard. i worked at jobs. I, I've worked, you know, I, I've done my share of shit, and I knew I could make money. That fourth weekend, I went home with some money. You know, I made profit. I made my tip in back on top of profit, and ever since then, I was making money from them. But I had to learn, you know, that over time, you have to evolve, you have to grow, you have to, you know, accommodate with the things. And as an entertainer, you know, depending on when you come into the game, how you come into the game is how shit gonna go for you. I came in from a small town, barely went out to clubs. I was a homebody, never been to a strip club, never really been to Chicago like that. You know, I was, I was, you can call me a country girl. So simple as that. I was a country girl in the city trying to make some money, you know, and, um, for about six to eight months, I was in Chicago dancing and didn't nobody know I was dancing, you know, didn't nobody know. Cause didn't nobody in my hometown go to Chicago, Chicago too far. People, you know, everybody go to the Lou, you know, St. Louis to go party and shit. Cause then nobody want to go to Chicago. That's two and a half, three hour drive. And then when they done, they wanted to come home and go to sleep. Chicago, you know, Chicago a little farther than the loop, you know. But after my little run in Chicago, I was like, you know, I felt like I deserved more money. I was evolving. I was dressing better. I was getting better dance routines. And I was just like, yo, I need more money. This ain't cutting it. So, and at this time, I was only dancing on the weekends. I wasn't dancing during the week. I wasn't you know, dancing all the time. I was only dancing on Fridays and Saturdays in the city. Eventually, it went to, somebody was like, oh, go to the Lou, go to the Lou. Uh, they got more money, you pretty, you make more money there. It's just they gutter there, they savage. And I'm like, who can be more savage than Chicago? Like, the chicks in Chicago is a whole nother breed, bro. Like, the chicks in Chicago taught me what it was to me. If you won't smoke, you get all the smoke. Like. I, I seen bitches get bitched and I seen bitches get their ass beat up. Like, it ain't, it wasn't like, oh yeah, you just look and, and it was smoke. No, on the, they got they, they got on that on the floor. Like, we on the floor dancing, making money and they got on that. They didn't care, you know? So, I was like, I procrastinated for a while. I procrastinated. Finally went to the loop. Went to the loop and was at bottoms up for two months. Went there. Just all I knew was stay to myself. I had one goal and one goal to come in there and make a bag and leave, go home. I didn't leave with nobody and hang out with people after the club. I wasn't with that. You know, Chicago, I established some friendships in Chicago with some entertainers. And to this day, we still cool, you know. So I went to the Lou, tried it out. When I tell you I made a bag when I went to the Lou first time, I made a bag. And ever since, I stayed in the Lou, you know. And um, it was just money. It was money for me. I was I was making money at the ups. And I danced by myself major majority of the time. I met some other entertainers that I was cool with for a little while, but 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 we kind of just, you know, 
we branched apart because of the type of person that I am, you know. Uh, I, you know, everybody got a different lifestyle, but my lifestyle ain't for everybody. You know, I, I come into this, you know, a lot of people come into the club, you know, seeing, you know, having to, you know, get their liquid courage or, you know, do they love, you know, they love shit to get lit, you know, to, to distract them from what, what you do as an entertainer. Because being an entertainer, y'all think, oh, she's a hoe, she's a prostitute. No, nah, these are women that literally, you know, damn near on a regular basis get threatened, assaulted, you know, just to do what they got to do to make a bag. And y'all be like, oh, get a job. Sometimes they in situations where they can't get a job. Maybe they didn't get the diploma. Maybe they got some felonies. Maybe they got stuff that they really have to take care of on a short notice. You don't know nobody's situation, so you can't just sit there and point fingers at somebody and say they this and that. I've met some real solid entertainers. Man, some of the biggest hoes be the bitches that work at Kroger's. Just some of the biggest hoes be the ones that, that, that be, you know, working at City Trends. You feel me? Like, it ain't, it ain't never that. So, went to the loo, worked there, was making a bag, you know, met people. You know, but eventually I still stayed to myself for a while. Then, you know, they opened up the Onyx there, and I, and I opened up with them, making money there. You know, and um, after a while, I was just like, you know, it's, it's other clubs. It's other set, it's other state cities, and it was just like my curiosity started getting bigger and bigger. And finally, took my car and just started driving city to city. Uh, after that, I believe I went to, where did I go first? I think I went to Detroit first. I went to Detroit, my first major city, I went to Detroit and I liked it there. You know, um, Detroit has money, but it's a certain way you gotta come about it in there. It ain't, you know, uh, it's just pep, pep, skip. Every city got a, got its own routine, its own swag, its own style, even its own music, excuse me. Detroit, fast music. I, I went to Detroit and I was just like, why the music so fast? And they was just, this Detroit. That's how we bump. And then, you know, you have to adapt to that. So when I go to, you know, I go to different cities, I adapt because Chicago got their music. St. Louis got their music. So Chicago got Lil Baby, G Herbo, you know, all them niggas. Then St. Louis be playing Young Jeezy and all them niggas. And you got Detroit play all types of music, but they music sped up. Like, every city got a different swag. And as an entertainer, either you get with it or you get left. I got with it. Literally, every city I went to, I made some type of money, you know, and it was just like ever since then, I just kept traveling, you know. The money was good. I was able to, you know, stack up, take care of stuff, do what I need to do, pay off things. So I continued to be an entertainer, you know. I, couldn't nobody be my boss, so I was cool with being my own boss. Yeah, you go to the club, you got these managers that think they run you and as an entertainer, you are an independent contract. If you don't sign nothing stating that you only gonna work at that club as a contract or whatever you call it, you you're an independent contractor. So when one club pissed me off, I took off. I took off to another club. Got tired of that club, took off to another club. There's so many clubs in the United States of America, you would shit. One club pissed you off, keep going. I didn't have no kids, I didn't have no real responsibilities. And at that point I just kept traveling. And once I got a taste of traveling, it was just like, it's so much more out here. And I continued to be an entertainer. And at that point, I became a full-time entertainer. You know, at one point, it was me being an entertainer on the weekends and going to school during the week. And once I finished my construction, it was like, okay, I'm going to go work, you know, work in the construction field, come back to school. And, you know, I'm I'm geeked to go back to school, you know. At, at that point, the school had funded me um, a free ride to get my class A CDLs. And I do have that. I just never drove any trucks after I got it. Because two days after my graduation of my construction, my brother passed away. And from that point, I kind of spiraled out of control. You know, um, it was like... At that point, I was lost because the year before I lost my my boyfriend around that time, and then now I lost my little brother. That 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 really messed with my head, you know, um, because I didn't I didn't know how to accept it, you know. When you have really traumatic things happening to you back to back on top of whatever you got going in your life, because at that time I was dating people, 
you know, the dude I was dating at that time was a fucking dick. You feel me? Like, I, that day, you know, when I found out my brother had passed away, you know, the dude wasn't answering phone. I just needed comfort. I just needed somebody to tell me it's going to be okay. Because, you know, I got to be a pillar for my mom. That's her baby. Like, I needed somebody to be like, yo, it's going to be okay. It's going to be cool. Went looking for this dude, you feel me? And found him, you know. But he was at another, you know, chick house. And it was just like, you know, you you tell me all this and that and the third that you you only mess with me. And then you turn around, you tell me you flipping stories now. And you know I'm not messing with nobody else, but you out here doing you. You feel me? That ain't cool. And you an older cat, bro. Like, I, I, I dealt with older men for so long because I felt like they knew better. But they did the same things that the young niggas do. Don't let that age shit fool you. Sometimes that age shit don't mean a damn thing. Because these niggas don't never grow up. They niggas. They do what they want to do. But at that point, it was just like, after that situation, it was like, fuck these niggas. Go get some money. I was, I was, I was on a binge. I didn't want to do nothing but hustle. And that's what I did. I started traveling. I started stacking. I started enjoying life. And it was I was gone. You know? And it was just like... So many people didn't know me because I was like... I was a shadow. Like, I would come into people's clubs, turn that bitch up, and leave. People didn't know who I was. I didn't, I didn't sit down long enough to talk to people. It was just like... I didn't care. They'll find me. If they're looking for me, they're going to find me. And that's what I did. You know, that's where my fan base came from. A lot of people be want to be like, oh, yeah, you know, your fan base came from such and such and such and such. Y'all know me as Robbie World's new girlfriend. Of course, that's cool. But before I was with him, before I really started collabing with Robbie, it was Lil Benzie. My page was known as Lil Benzie. I traveled and niggas noticed me because of my ass. Keep it a hundred. I'm I'm gonna be really honest with y'all. It was because of my ass and my looks. You know, I wasn't too pressed about the funny stuff right now. You know, I used to get on my live and I always talk to these niggas crazy. I didn't care. I didn't care. So people would li literally come to my lives just to watch me do that. But eventually it started getting I started getting funnier and funnier and more people started to watch and watch. And with me being with him, it was just like Okay, now you need to market yourself because people are literally waiting for you to get on this shit and watch you. And it was just like, all right, cool. So in that mix of me being with him and you know before him in the in the mix of that, I ended up getting a manager, you know. And from there, I just started really working, you know. But a lot of people have me have a um, misunderstanding of me because they've never heard me sit down and actually talk about myself. And I have to explain to people, like, they be like, you ain't got to explain yourself. No, it's not even the fact of explaining myself. It's just the fact that y'all don't know me. Y'all don't know why I'm an entertainer. Y'all don't know why I do this shit that I do. Y'all don't know why. Y'all think that I'm another black China. Y'all think I'm another Kim Kardashian. Y'all think I'm another this and that. Y'all understand, as an entertainer, I didn't sleep with none of these niggas. I didn't have to go home with nobody to make no bag. I didn't have to. I came in there and did what an entertainer is supposed to do and entertain, made my money, and left. That's that's all I did. I didn't have to sit here and be in a nigga ear all night long to get him to spend a thousand dollars on me. That it, this is what y'all understand. What other people do don't have shit to do with me. Simple as that. I make my money because I'm a hustler. I entertain. If you ever been to the club to see me, y'all be like, yeah, she makes some money because she's an entertainer. You feel me? Like, I just, that's just who I am, you know? And y'all be like, oh, y'all, it's, it's funny because some of y'all just really don't like me because y'all don't like yourself. Simple as that. I, I'm i just going to say it like that. Y'all don't like me because y'all don't like yourself. A lot of y'all might not agree with me. Y'all can disagree. Y'all got an opinion. I don't care. I can voice your damn opinion on your own page where somebody really cares because I don't. Because, you, you know, I don't. But this was just an intro video to let you know, you know, who I am, what I do, and where I come from. I didn't choose to be an entertainer right off bat. Like, it was... It was something that I had put in the safe in the bottom of the ocean, you know, with a red tag. If I ever needed it, it was there. And 
at that point in my life, I needed that position. And ever since I stuck with it. Will I go back to school? Yeah, maybe. Am I enjoying my life right now? Yeah, I'm 23. I don't have any kids. I can wake up tomorrow and decide to go to Miami. I mean, because I can work in any city, any club. Like, damn near every city has a club. Like, at least 100 clubs in each city or state or whatever. So, I'm not tripping. You know, it, this is my life. This is my lifestyle. You know, a lot of y'all want to tell me what I do with my money. And y'all understand, I know what to do with my money. I just paid my birthday car off. I just bought a car for my birthday in January, January 25th, and I just paid it off. You know, paid the rest of it off. This January, I just bought my car this January, and I just paid it off. You know, it might not be some extravagant, fancy car or no Jag or, you know, but it's a work car, and it's more than what a lot of people got. You know, it's a work car. I travel a lot. I drive a lot. I don't want no fancy car and wear and tear because I like to travel and I like to, I prefer to drive everywhere. That's just me personally. I prefer to drive because I travel a lot. So, you know, with a lot of y'all, um, for my followers that's been messing with me since day one, I appreciate it. You know, for y'all new followers, if I ain't convinced you, I ain't persuaded you, you ain't got to follow me. <laughs> For every 10 people that don't like me, it's a hundred, there's a thousand, there's tens of thousands of people that do like me. So, you know, I'm, look, your best bet is stay off my page or get your feelings hurt. You know, because I don't, I'm not going to let it slide. I'm not, I'm, I'm just honest like that, you know. I'm the type of person where I had to learn you know, wake up with that. I don't give a fuck attitude because it make you feel better in the morning. It, it, it helps with getting you motivated, you know. So, like I said, you know, for y'all that had a lot of questions about who I was, where I come from, what am I, what am I who is Lil Benzie, this was just the intro to taste your, you know, make your taste buds water a little bit. So what I need you to do is like, subscribe, and share if you got any other questions, any pranks that I can do on Rob, anything like that, drop them at the bottom. I will respond. And like I said, you can always follow me on Instagram. I do be on live. I do talk shit. I do have fun. So I'm going to see y'all next time. Niggas envy, uh, blicky got the stiffy, uh, got the blicky, uh, drum it, hooky, slippy, uh. You push on all shit, you know